Did I kill someone with the law of attraction? This real story happened a number of years ago, a few years before I actively practice Western ceremonial magic. At the time, I was actively using the law of attraction to manifest my desires. I always produced good results. In fact, I have manifested miracles in my life. In summary, my understanding of the law of attraction, in an overly simplified explanation, it is thoughts become things, whatever you focus on, it comes true, whatever you visualize, comes to reality. Now for some background in the story, without getting into the details of my life. I have a career in a very specialized field of business consultation. I am very good at what I do, I am very passionate at what I do. When I started in this profession, I have to take a course of study, the instructor for this course was also my professional mentor. He was a very well respected member of that professional community. He was also one of the few people who held a doctorate in a closely related field. For the purpose of this story, we shall call him Dr. Evans. Dr. Evans seems to have taken a liking to me, back then, I was a college undergrad, bright eye and naive, he more or less took me under his wings, opened some doors, and taught me tricks of the trade. Being a very young man back then, not even old enough to drink alcohol, I trusted him with my career. I was once given a very profound life lesson, that was never outshine your master. I wasn't to stay an undergrad kid forever, soon, I went to graduate school, and over the course of many years, my qualifications were comparable to Dr. Evans, if not better. I was also able to build a good following as well. This being the age of social media, the world was my oyster, a young man's game. I wasn't sure when Dr. Evans became jealous with my professional achievements, or at what point did he felt his station in life was threatened. I have always been very polite and respectful, and if I were ever to run into him at a conference, I would pay for his drinks. Dr. Evans was kind of marble man in the profession. His reputation was immaculate. Having said that, life is never what it appears. I found out some of Dr. Evans' training material was plagiarized from a little-known book. It wasn't even a clever plagiarism, where you stole someone's idea and made it your own. Dr. Evans very much copied the book word by word. He dropped the last two words of a management system, then trademarked it as his own. He would have gotten away with it 30 years ago, but in the age of Google Scholar, you just can't hide plagiarism. I never explicitly confronted him on the issue, nor did I make a big deal out of it. I did gave a small talk, at a conference, where I quoted the author of the book whom Dr. Evan plagiarized. It was a case of I know what you did last summer. Dr. Evans knew what he had done, I knew what he had done, and he knew that I knew it. On a separate occasion, there was a lady who was a rising star in the profession. For the sake of this story, Let's call her Sharon. Sharon was in her late middle age when I met her, we were good friends, the kind of professional friend who also shares a lot of personal thoughts. Sharon dropped out the profession abruptly, then reappeared a few years later very briefly. Being a good friend, we had a lot to catch up. That was when Sharon confided in me that Dr. Evans had raped her. The rape wasn't even the worst part, fearing retribution. Dr. Evans was actively destroying Sharon's reputation after the rape, that way no one would believe her story. Feeling ashamed, isolated and depressed, Sharon basically withdrawn from her professional life. I wasn't able to verify her claims of rape, but the part where Dr. Evan was trying to ruin her career had merits. While the conversation with Sharon was in private, Dr. Evan did see me talking to Sharon. She was in tears and I was dodging his gaze, so it was likely that he knew what was being said. Later I was able to come across a few other women, who confided in me similar experiences with Dr. Evans. I am not a police officer or any sorts of investigator, I don't know if the sexual encounters were consensual. Dr. Evan was never arrested or publicly accused. Having said that, 
Dr. Evans was married, he and his much younger wife had a child. Divorce would be devastating for him. All this was before the Me Too movement. Think of Dr. Evans as the Harvey Weinstein of his time, luring women in with the promise of career advancement, exploiting them sexually, then ruining these women's reputation for fear of exposing his sexual indiscretion. Adding to the intrigue of Dr. Evans, in the latest edition of one of his books, his publisher dropped the title Dr. the PhD after his name was stripped from the book. My thought was. Really? The man who insisted to be addressed as doctor wherever he goes, decided to not use his title in his book. Really? Or, maybe, the publisher knew something I didn't know. The more I thought about it, the more cracks emerged. Dr. Evan was a very intelligent man, but he didn't behave like an university trained scholar. I did some investigations, while I can't say if his doctorate was fake, but the university he claimed to have granted his doctorate, could not confirm his degree. While conducting my investigation, I also uncovered that Dr. Evans was dismissed from the Professional Society for Sexual Indiscretions, but at that point, I was hardly surprised. Now I am not the type of guy who likes to expose others, but I am not sure if Dr. Evans saw it that way. I may also have unconsciously tipped my hand. One time, I had the professional courtesy to introduce him at a professional symposium, when I met him at the backstage, I politely asked how he would like to be introduced. He gave me this really evil, really intense glare, and in an indignant voice, he said. Please introduce me as Dr. Evans. I didn't know when Dr. Evans turned against me. I couldn't speak for his motives, but I could see why he felt threatened. I knew about his plagiarism. I knew about his sexual impropriety. I knew his doctoral degree was a fraud. I honestly wasn't going to do anything with the information at hand. Dr. Evans, at this time, was in his late 70s, about to retire so he was going to fade away sooner rather than later. Besides, it really was none of my business. Little did I know what was about to happen. Dr. Evans was dead set to do unto me the same thing he did to Sharon, that was doing everything in his power to ruin my career. Maybe Dr. Evans thought the best defense is the best offense? Maybe he couldn't stand it I knew so much? Maybe he feared my knowledge could be used as blackmail material? Maybe it was just his primal shame? The next few years was very painful for me. It is even painful to recall the events as we speak, even with this computer-generated voice, it is difficult to confront my memories. I am going to keep this short and get to the points. In short, he started spreading rumors about me. What kind of rumors, you ask? the same kind of rumors that he fears I would spread about him. Except what I knew were facts, he just fabricated stories about me. Soon, rumors about me sleeping with my students started to emerge, rumors about my work being plagiarized, and worst of all, rumors about my academic degree being faked. All the rumors could be traced back to Dr. Evans. You see, the thing about rumor is nobody cares to fact check. People who told you they want the best for you, secretly wanted to see you fail. I am not being negative, that's the fact. I think part of Dr. Evans' strategy was to throw so many lies at me so I would lose my cool, appear irrational, and lose even more credibility. I believe it was also his intention to accuse me of the things I could use against him, so when I revealed what I knew about Dr. Evans, it would sound like I am just turning the table on him with the exact same accusations. I played it cool though, all the rumors can be easily proven wrong. But then I found out the hard way that it's not the way the world works. I knew if I make a big deal out of it, the rumors would spread even faster. I noticed my professional opportunities were fast fading, and my supposed friends rolled their eyes when I tried to express a professional point of view. I got a taste of what Sharon must have felt when Dr. Evans was trying to ruin her career. I felt isolated, frustrated and even depressed. The most respected man of the profession was fabricating rumors against me. 
I didn't stand a chance to clear my name. Not against someone like Dr. Evans. It wasn't just an isolated incident, it went on for years. I wasn't going to let anyone bully me out of my profession, but I had to thread very carefully. Besides, if I had left the profession, it would be a tacit affirmation of guilt. Maybe that was Dr. Evans' game after all, push me out of the door completely, then use me as scapegoat. The shadow my reputation will carry all his sins. At this time I was a subscriber to the Law of Attraction. I had been practicing the principles of Law of Attraction since I was a child, but the book The Secret had me practice the rituals religiously. This was before I got into Western ceremonial magic. That means no demons in this story. Sorry to disappoint some of you. I started using meditation and visualization, creating a thought bubble where I am back on track again, and everything is perfect. Except my visualizations exercises would start to break down, the root of the problem was Dr. Evans. I started visualizing Dr. Evans without a voice. Then a very disturbing image flashed before my eyes. I saw Dr. Evans' face rotting away. The image was so disturbing, I was shocked out of my meditative state. I started to visualize Dr. Evans' face without a mouth instead. At this point, Dr. Evans was approaching 80 years old. A healthy 80 years old, I may add, he jogged every day, had a lot of energy, ate healthy, he had a stroke back in his 50s, otherwise, he was healthy. At about the time I started visualizing Dr. Evans without a mouth, he abruptly lost sight on one of his eyes. As he was rushed to the hospital, he was diagnosed with cancer of the mouth. He had a tumor that was pressing on his optic nerves. I didn't find out about that until six months later, at a professional conference. Dr. Evans lost a lot of weight, but he said his cancer was under control because of early detection. Did my visualization of Dr. Evans without a mouth give him mouth cancer? I don't know, but it didn't stop his cottage hobby of trying to ruin my career. There was a lady who was a professional friend, I knew her for more than 10 years, and I always thought her as a dear friend. She came up to me and asked what I had been doing lately. I said I am doing well, teaching a class at a local college, then she gave me this ridiculous laugh. Then she said, seriously, what are you really doing these days? It was then I knew Dr. Evans had turned another one of my friends against me, and it must had happened at that very morning. Even with cancer in his mouth, he was still using his mouth to destroy my reputation. I didn't know what to do, I tried to visualize Dr. Evans without a mouth again, but I just couldn't concentrate. I was frustrated to a point of anger. It was then a voice seemingly popped in my head, the voice said, do you want me to kill him? It was a very foreign thought, but it was very clear. If I were practicing western ceremonial magic at the time, I would have swore it was a spirit that talked to me. I remember clearly that I gave it some thought, then replied to the voice in my head, whatever, I just want him gone. The voice replied back to me, done. I didn't visualize Dr. Evans dead, it was too negative and I didn't want to feel the energy of death, but from there on, I stopped visualizing Dr. Evans without a mouth. Instead, whenever the thought of him came up, I just said to the universe, I want him gone. Fast forward seven months, Dr. Evan had a really bad stroke, he was in intensive care for five days and then he passed away. I couldn't help but to think me summoning the universe to get rid of him had something to do with his death. Maybe it was his time to go, he was 80 years old at the time of death, maybe other people had cursed him too. After all, my career was not the first one he tried to ruin. I just happened to be the only one who had the tenacity to stay and fight. I even went to his funeral, it was more for me to get closure than to wish his family peace. Dr. Evans had a career that spent over fifthly years, a marble man of the profession, with thousands of students. Now guess how many professional friends went to his funeral? Not one. Well, I was the only one.
All in all, there was no more than 30 people at his funeral. It was suffice to say that Dr. Evans didn't make a lot of friends in his life. In final analysis, did I feel responsible for Dr. Evans' death? I can't help but to feel a little responsible. But then, I was not the only one who wished for his demise. If it were me who put him away, I was not only using my energy, but I was also channeling the energy of Sharon, and all the women whose life he ruined, the author whose work he had stolen. Where that poor author's work still bears the trademark of Dr. Evans, and all the people who were victim of his academic fraud. If my use of law of attraction was the cause of his demise, I don't feel guilty, I feel like I had executed justice. Had Dr. Evans been alive today, the Me Too movement would have had him alive anyway. What about you? Have you ever used the law of attraction to hurt someone? Have you ever summoned a demon to exact revenge? Had you ever used black magic to exact justice on your behalf, but in the process, caused more damage than you had first imagined? Please share your stories on the comment section below.